the, the challenge we face is that teachers teach the way they were taught and teachers teach what they're familiar with. And we're asking teachers to integrate all of the satellite technology in their classrooms. And they've never taught, they've never been taught this and they're not familiar with it. And that's our challenge with the education and technology program is trans to translate all of this high tech stuff that Tony and other people have been talking about to a level so that the teachers can understand it well enough to uh, teach their students. And so I, I'm just gonna present some things that's looking beyond just gathering grid squares, but looking at the Fox whatever systems uh, and the experiments that are carried on board and how I'm going to try and translate that into the K through 16 classroom. You heard about the attitude determination experiment. I call it the wobbler experiment because I, what I'm interested in is see what kind of a wobble the satellite will experience over uh, the Z axis. And it uses the uh, MIMS gyros and uh, there are two of them in each MIM gyros, uh, two gyros, and uh, they will be uh, set up in a constell constellation on the X, Y, and Z axis. And um, what is inside this gyro is actually a, a little arm that's oscillating, and the oscillation uh, depends on the rate of rotation and the direction of rotation, and inside of the little device it translates that oscillation into a voltage that varies with the direction and the speed of rotation. And so I've developed a little simulator that is an affordable simulator that will be made available to teachers so that they can do some experiments with the MIMS gyros in their classroom. Then the simulator will, uh, will be on a little rotator. Uh, they can tilt uh, the board to, uh, to, uh, 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 to approximate what kind of behavior will be in the satellite and the information will be data linked off the little platform and uh, to the computer and displayed in an Excel spreadsheet. And then the students can do the mathematics, which is the real learning that goes on, to, to take the raw data and uh, translate it into what kind of rotation rates there are. And then uh, once they are simulating this in the classroom, they should be prepared to actually receive the data directly from the satellite and then uh, see what the real satellite looks like. And uh, I've developed a simple little GUI uh, that uh, the, in and, and using XP modules and the, the, the information from the simulator will be dumped into this GUI and then in turn it, it's dumped into Excel spreadsheet. And once it's in Excel, you can do all the mathematics that you want to do with it. And this is uh, what it looks like uh, what happens with the MIMS gyros with the simulator and it shows the rotation rate in the X, Y, and the Z planes and then I actually tilted the board and ran the simulation to cause it to wobble and it was remarkable uh, that you could see from the different graphs and the colored lines there, they move around a little bit and this allows the students to uh, do the real learning that goes on with taking the numbers, t turning it into a graph, and then coming up with some sort of meaningful explanation of what they're seeing in the graph. Um, what's next? Uh, I just received a, a small little grant from the ARRL Foundation that will allow me to take the work I've already done on the Wobble Experiment uh, Simulator and I'll be able to formalize that we're going to be including it into the TI2 space uh, in-service training program, which Matt uh, Severn, my instructor in the back of the room, teaches. And he'll be introducing this concept uh, into future TI2 space programs. And um, I will be making the Wobbler experiment, the Wobbler similar, uh, simulator, uh, available to interested and qualified educators through the Education and Technology Program grants. And uh, discussions are ongoing uh, between Mark and I, myself on how we're going to be able to market this to the general ham population to, in to encourage the lifelong learning of the general ham populations through ham, uh, ham fests and so forth. I was intrigued a couple of weeks ago to see the description of the power management tracking experiment that is proposed for FOX2 
and I actually played around with that a little bit to see how I could develop a simulator that could be used in primarily a high school or a community college physics class and uh, I was able to very quickly in a matter of a few hours uh, develop a, a little simulator to generate the curves much like you saw with uh, Tony to, to find and uh, locate the sweet spot I call it of the uh, solar panels and uh, then uh, develop an experiment or some simple hardware based on a pick that will control the, the output of the voltage of the solar panel to keep it operating within the sweet spot. And uh, this will allow students to, first of all, experiment with solar panels, which is green energy, and that's uh, uh, very popular now. And that's anticipated for grade levels eight through nine. And then to develop some circuitry, which now is community college level stuff, some engineering stuff that they can develop in their classrooms to do MPPT. That's the uh, basic circuit that I developed to, to do MPPT, and it looks a little complicated, but literally it took me a couple hours to uh, come up with that circuit, uh, put it together, program the pick, and make it work. So it's doable. And so uh, that was the sweet spot. That's the oscilloscope pattern of the circuitry that is causing the solar panel to work in the sweet spot. And uh, it's switching the solar panel on and off very quickly. And uh, that's what the oscilloscope pattern looks like of that circuitry. The last thing I want to mention is this. Um, this is an offshoot of some uh, traffic that came across the bulletin board system. Uh, a number of guys were talking about the need for a battery operated affordable rotor system for the G55. That has been on my bucket list for a thousand years. I finally had the time and these guys kind of kicked me in the butt and I said, ah, okay, I'm going to do it. And so I did. I'm calling it the Wobbler Radfex Antenna Pointing System or RAPS because my real goal is to provide a, an affordable antenna rotating system that I can give to schools so that the schools can participate in accessing all of this wonderful stuff that is coming out of the uh, Fox program. But the spinoff will be you guys, uh, to support you guys. So my goals were to develop a battery operated system for the portable operator, like myself, and a, a, an option that is cheaper than the G5500. I wanted something that you could reproduce with commercial off the stuff, uh, commercial off the stuff parts, uh, off the shelf parts, I'm sorry, with minimal mechanical work. It will work for an arrow and elk. And um, my target audience, of course, is the schools, but also the portable satellite operator. And I also finally wanted to fill a, a hole in my bucket list. So what we have here is a rotor system, and I encourage you to come by the ETP booth, and I'll give you a demonstration of this. It runs off a 12-volt battery. Instead of $1,000 for a G5500, it's about $275 in parts. It has all the uh, interfacing to SAT PC32 resident on the, uh, the rotor. What it is not, it will only handle small, lightweight antennas like the Elk and the Arrow. It is not weatherproof. It's not intended for 24-7 operations. It's designed to be used with you standing by. So if it doesn't stop when it's supposed to, you pull the power plug, okay? Although it can be configured for 180 degree elevation, uh, to simplify the design, I made it for 90 degrees, but because it's movable, you can uh, change some settings and set PC32, and you don't have that problem of coming to a 90 degree stop and having to wrap around. So I've got that problem solved. That's what it looks like. You can come up and see it close hand. I've got the prototyping board and configured those that way. It, it, these slides, I have them this way, so if you want to make a, a club presentation, I'd be more than happy to share it with you. That is what the uh, a formal circuit board would look like. Some of the other uh, mechanical parts will be cut off the circuit board, and that's for holding the position pots. 
An antenna mount is very exotic. It's a piece of PVC pipe and you just slip the antenna in there and it works just fine. So I encourage you to come by the booth and see this. I'll give you a demonstration of both this and Maria. I have space uh, scheduled in January QST and this uh, project will be highlighted in an article in QST and there will be a parts list and circuit diagrams and software. Once that thing hits the street, it's open source and you can uh, cut and paste and plagiarize it to your heart's content. So that's it. If there's any time left for questions, then we're done.